The collections module in Python is one of the most useful in many ways, and one of the most useful parts of the collections module is default dictionaries. As the name suggests, these are just dictionaries with a default value, but the quality of life improvement that you get from these is actually more than you would think at face value. We're going to be looking at a number of different ways to use these, including the simple way from the collections module. On top of that, they're actually one of the easier things of the standard library to implement yourself and you actually do need to be able to implement them to do some more advanced things with them. So as well as looking at how to use the normal collections module default dict, we're also gonna be looking at how to create and use our own. Of course, if you find the video helpful at any point, then consider leaving a like to let me know and maybe subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. With all that out of the way, let's get into it. So there are actually two ways of using a default dict in a broad sense. There is what I like to call the simple usage and then what I like to call the advanced usage which doesn't actually involve using default dict at all, which is, it sounds a little bit confusing, but we'll come to that when we come to it. I do want to show off the default dict from collections though, uh, which is, well, pretty much what it says. It's very similar to a dictionary. I believe it actually inherits from a dictionary, but it will create a value or use a default value for a key if you access a key that doesn't exist in the dictionary. And I'll explain a little bit what that means by using an example. So we'll have this word mapping, uh, which is a dict string of int equals default dict integer. And this uh, function is the default factory and is what will be called when you try and access a key that doesn't exist. I do if name double equals main. And you'll see over here that we have this lyrics.txt, which contains lyrics to a song I'm not like super familiar with i think it's some sort of meme perhaps i'm not sure uh but we can get uh, we can count the number of times each word appears in this song using a default dict so we could do with open uh lyrics.txt whoopsie daisies uh as f uh for line in f so iterate over each line for word in line dot lower dot split so uh, lowercase line and then get each word from it and do word mapping a word equal or plus equals one and you'll notice that we don't ever set any default values here and this is because default dict is doing this for us so we'll get to here we'll get to the word mapping and let's say we're processing this very first word here where it will try and access the uh, the key or we'll try and access using the key where and it will find it wouldn't exist but instead of erroring it will call this integer function instead now this integer function will return zero by default so now the value of key of key where is zero and that's what that does and then from there we can plus equals one and then we'll get one out of it it is effectively the equivalent of doing something like um, if word not in uh, words mapping and then uh, word mapping uh, oh that's not what I to do at all word mapping uh, word I've got the microphone in a different place so I can't see the keyboard as well <laughs> try to put it a bit more in front of me so the sound is a bit better um, but it's effectively equivalent to this so it will check to see if the word is not in the word mapping and then it will set a default value if so, default dict is a bit more optimized than this, not least because you don't have to type the code, but because it does it all in the background in C, which makes it quicker. Uh, there is also um, this word mapping dot set default that I didn't know about until I started researching this video. Uh, you could do something like that and then have a default. And I think that has to be, and it, oh, that's just taking this type in here. Um, but this is less efficient than default dicts anyway, according to the Python documentation. And then for the sake of uh, completion, we can do words mapping dot items, and then we can print it all out to show that it's working as we would expect it to. Uh, and then count like that. Pi counts, as you can see, I've already done a take at this bit of the video before. Uh, but we get each word in the song and the number of times that the word is uttered. Now, some of you may have realized that you can actually use something else to do this exact purpose. Um, you can use something called counter to do this from the collections module. I'll leave that as an exercise for the reader or the viewer, I guess, in this case, to look at how that works. But you can use a default dict for the same thing. Uh, one other way 
that you wouldn't be able to use a counter for that you could use a default dict for is when the default argument is a collection like a list or a set. So if we have this slightly modified example here where we've set a uh, default dict to how you set as its uh, default factory method, we go through the same thing again, but we now print out or we now store all of the words that begin with a particular letter. So here again, we're doing the same thing. We are storing the letter. This will create a new set and then we add a word to the set. And because it's a set, it will get rid of duplicates. We then print it the same way. And this dot adds just works because we are creating a set using the default dict. The default dict is really cool, but it does have a limitation in that the default uh, factory method cannot take any arguments. So if you look at this type, we'll see this default factory um, is incapable of taking any arguments, which is not ideal in all situations, but there is a way around this. And this is to create our own default dict class, which is not as difficult as you might think. So if I just create uh, impl.py, and then I'm going to use type hints uh, to describe it a bit better. If you're unfamiliar with type hints, I do have some videos uh, talking about type vars and the such that you can go watch. We can do key type var k and then v equals type var v. And then a default dict class could look something like this. So we take a key value of dictionary, so we inherit from that. We then have an init where we accept a default factory argument, which is a callable, which takes nothing and a V. Uh, and I'm showing off kind of how default dict is typically implemented here. Uh, so self dot default factory equals default factory. There we go. And then when it detects a missing key, it calls this missing dunder. And then key is key or type K, and then we return type V out of this. And then we return self dot default factory. And the result of that function call. You'll notice that the Dunder missing does actually take a key argument, but we don't use it. Or at least the default implementation of default dict doesn't use it. But because we've created our own here, we're not limited by the same constraints. So we can update the type hint to say it takes a key value, and then we could just pass key in. And this allows us to do much more complicated things. And one of these things is lazy loading. The example I'm about to show you is based on a real world example. Um, it wasn't this exact use case, but it was doing, um, it was the same sort of idea where it was lazily loading a class in a particular way using the key. So we have our data class profile, my favorite example, name, age, and job. And we have a database connection to this SQLite 3 database up here which has, let's see if I can actually load it, there you go. It just has some uh, names, ages, and jobs in here, easy enough. Uh, so we can create our own flavor of default dict by defining profile default dict and then dict. And we could just pass our own generic arguments in here. So we're gonna say that the keys will always be a string and the value will always be a profile. And then we can define our done the missing and we could just put all our logic in here. So in this case, we want to actually fetch data from the database. And this allows us to lazily load information. In this case, from the database, it works very similarly to a cache in a lot of ways. Uh, so we could do row equals connection dot execute. And we want to select uh, name, age, job, from profiles, where name equals that. And then, nope, that's not a dot, that's a comma. And then we need to pass our key through like that. And we want to fetch one because we just want to fetch one attribute. We then also probably want to do some error handling to say if row is none, uh, then we raise a key error, uh, which would be um, say records uh, key does not exist. Just a simple argument. We now want to set self key equals profile, uh, name equals row zero, age equals row one, and then job equals row two, because this returns as a tuple. And then we also want to return the self key. So you could actually just return the value straight up, but you won't actually include it in the database. 
you do need to add it to another oh, database the uh, the dictionary sorry you do need to add the the uh, the key value pair to the dictionary and then you also need to return it separately you need to do both of those things and we could just have profiles equals profile default dict here and then if we if name equals a main down here we can print uh, profiles to see uh, what it's like before we do anything with it. Uh, oh, we need to do profiles. There we go. And we can then print profiles me. And then we can print profiles again to see what it is after that. And then we can print what happens if we try and get a profile that doesn't exist. So if we do that, not that lazy. There we go. We start with an empty dictionary. Uh, when we try and get the key here, we then load the data from the database into a profile object. We print profiles, we see that we have persisted that. So the name is the key and the full profile is the value. And then when we get one that doesn't exist in the database, we get this error saying record uh, Bob does not exist. I don't know why that is in quotes like that. Is that new formatting? I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> But that is how you could utilize a custom default dict using the missing dunder to perform uh, lazy loading. And that is a broad overview about how default dicts work. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer anything you have. And if you want to see all the other ways that Python is awesome, then you could check out the Python is awesome playlist, which is very conveniently named by clicking the card in the end cast on your screen now. I'll see you in the next one for every do next.